and we're live. Hey everybody, welcome into the at Flippin' Hippo's YouTube channel. I'm Star the Flippin' Hippo. Today is Friday, June 14th, and I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a haul that we got last weekend from yard sales. A little bit of a haul. <laughs> it's not that big. Um, let me make sure everything is muted so that nobody hears an echo. Hey Reseller King, welcome in. So, just like with anything in reselling, sourcing has its ups and downs. It can be a roller coaster. You can have days where you go out and you find a plethora, a trunk full, a car full. And then you can have days where you are out all day hitting the different community yard sales and digging and looking and come away with very, very little. Um, hey, Veranda Files, welcome in. Um, I know you told me your name and it's not coming to me right now I'm very sorry um so last saturday we went to i want to say a total of four community sales and one church sale we were out from 8 a.m until about two and we came home with some stuff for me but we didn't really find anything we found one thing for keith um <clears throat> but it was just one of those weekends where i don't know it was kind of just really disappointing you know, you go to the community yard sales, and usually those are the places where you find the most stuff. The first one we went to, actually a lot of houses were participating in. It's a little community up the road, um, maybe eight blocks. It's not that big. Like, you could park it one end and walk it. Even if with a bad back, I was able to walk it with brakes. Um, and there were, like, houses up and down every street participating. It wasn't, like, for lack of houses. It's just that they have this community yard sale every year, and this is our third time going to it, and I'm starting to recognize people and their houses, and the same stuff they have out every single year. These people are putting out the same overpriced crap, and it's not selling. It's not going to sell, but... Um, and then the next three that we went to were advertised as community yard sales. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. And had signs all over the place, a big area, but like three or four houses were participating. It looked like maybe they had meant to have more and people just didn't do it. I don't know. Anyway, I found some plush, which I'm pleased with. Um, and I hit the jackpot on loveys. And if y'all don't know what a lovey is, I'm about to show you a whole bunch of them and we'll talk about them a little bit but i did hit the jackpot on lovey's new with tags a bunch of plush and then i got two boxes of stuff literally christmas stuff though um but i'll tell you more about the boxes when we get to them overall it wasn't too disappointing for me because i have a lot of stuff to go through um, the plush and loveys obviously will be things that I want to get to right away within the next week or so. Get them um, steamed, photographed, listed. And then these two mystery boxes that I, I haven't looked at them yet will be things that I will work on when I don't have anything else. They'll kind of be like rainy weather stuff because it is all Christmas. Um, I do list all the things all year, so that is Christmas is not the reason I'm holding back on it. Um, it's just stuff that um, I think is going to be long tail. It's going to be easy to photograph and list, but there are obviously other things I will find that need to be put in first that are more likely to flip faster or for more money. So, I guess we'll start with the loveys. They came from the big community yard sale, the one we went to first. And I actually, being the plushie queen, didn't even know about these until someone in our Facebook group talked about them. And the reason is because these are typically not going to be found in with the plush in thrift stores. They're typically going to be in with the baby stuff because they are like really super soft plushies with blankies for babies and that's what they're meant for. So I had maybe seen these before. Sometimes they get in with the plush. Very rarely you'll find these in with the plush. So if I had ever seen one in the plush, I guarantee you I saw the blanket. I saw the brand was a baby brand and passed it up. Or they weren't even in the areas that I look in. And there was a whole thread of conversation in our uh, Flippin' Hippos Reseller Pod Facebook group 
about these and then I found a couple um, at Goodwill and the first one I ever found was a panda bear with a blankie and I paid 50 cents for him and he flipped in a couple of weeks for like 30 bucks so these are a definite bola they're called loveys you want to use the word lovey as a keyword in your title they can have huge plush well this isn't huge but you know what I mean this is like a full-sized smaller plush attached to the blanket um, sometimes they'll be just smaller ones or just the head this one's just the head and the arms um, but I did find quite a few of these at one place she her yard sale was her wall in front of her front yard she had like a <clears throat> excuse me a nice tall wall and she had a blanket out with all these on there um they're all new attacks and she was very clearly pregnant she was cute as she could be she was really young really small you know those really tiny women with just like the little the belly they look like an olive on a toothpick i mean that nice she was really cute but yeah she was very clearly pregnant and she had all these out and my thought is maybe she got so many of these at like a baby shower that she just didn't want them all or need them all because you can only have so many loveys, right? So most of these I paid a dollar for, but they're all new with tags. So they're nice. Um, this one's a bear with a real fuzzy, soft blanket attached. This one's not a lovey, but I wanted it anyway. It is a Toys R Us. FAQ brand new for a dollar elephant with long legs and long arms and the giraffe of course um, this is a hallmark lullaby lamb You're supposed to squeeze him for music and he's not musicking he worked there I played him at the yard sale so maybe he needs his batteries replaced we'll have to check him out later he was working. I will open him up, replace his batteries, and retest him. Um, if he doesn't work, I'll just sell him as not working. He's still really soft and cute. And then the elephant. And the elephant has a rattle. So that's four lovies and one elephant for $5. But she also had this. Thanks, Hyde Run. Yeah, I was pretty excited. Um, Key said, if only we could find someone with a blanket on a wall with that many electronics, new with tags out. <laughs> but uh, I had to have this. You guys know I like this brand, the Wild Republic. And I do, I do tell you guys that the Wild Republic brand is definitely a bolo. The more rare animals are better because, for well, for a couple reasons. Number one, animals that are more rare are going to be able, you're going to be able to list them for a higher price because there's going to be less of them. There's probably, you know, the Wild Republic bears and tigers and lion, lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, there's probably a million of those. Um, but I just put a mermaid up yesterday or the day before. I um, listed a Wild Republic siren mermaid and I had the purple one. And I can't remember her name, but they all have names. And there was only one other one like mine, and so I was able to list it high. Um, so I do go after the more unique animals. I'll grab them all for 50 cents or whatever. But since he was two bucks, I would not have paid two bucks for a common. A common, like I'm playing magic. But anyway, this is an octopus. He has a big head. I thought he was kind of cute, and I was willing to take the risk on him for $2, being that I feel like octopuses are going to be rare, and I can price them higher. Um, I always love when I go to list a plush and I find one or two, or better yet, none, like mine on there, because if there's only one or two, I just price wherever I want super high, because I can wait for those other two to sell, or mine will get bought. In some instances, it's weird, but I think people do see more value sometimes in a higher priced item. So if there's two other ones online and their pictures are dark, 
on a couch, on a floor, their plush is on a table, and you have this bright, professionally lit, on a white background plush, and yours is twice the cost, people may be attracted to yours more and see more value in it because one, your pictures are better and your price is higher, so they're gonna look at those other ones with the bad pictures and say, what's wrong with those? How come those aren't $2 or $20? How come those are like five free ship or you know what I mean? So if there's only a couple and all of them are really, really bad pictures with bad lighting on bad backgrounds, make your picture really good and you can price really high. And a lot of times when I do that, mine will sell within a couple of days. And so my theory is that I see those other ones and wonder what's wrong with them. Oh, I had to get a drink. Sorry, guys. Hey, Sydney, welcome in. Thank you for coming. I'm so excited to see you here. Um, yeah, the octopus is super cool. Nathan's here. Is that is the octopus garden like a place? I feel I feel like I should know this, but um, and my shirt. Yes, Captain America. I'm feeling marvelly today. Um, I was watching. There's a show on. There's a movie out out there in the world somewhere. I could only find it on Prime, and it's like $4, so it's nowhere free to stream. But there's a movie called Chef, and it has that guy, John, for can't ever pronounce his name. He plays Happy Hogan in the Iron Man movies. Um, he made a movie called Chef, like four years ago, and he made it really, really authentic. He hired a chef to coach him in how to actually become a chef, and they had real chefs on the show, and they had real food in the show made by real chefs, and... So now, years later, he's making this series um, where he's going around with the chef that consulted with him for the movie. He owns a, a food truck called Keto, I think it's called. I can't remember. Not Keto, like the diet, K-E-T-O. Um, I can't remember the name of his food truck. But anyway, his food truck is famous because it's, it was on the lot of every single Marvel Cinematic Universe movie ever made. His food truck was famous. He fed everybody that made those movies. Um... And then he consulted John on the Chef movie. And so now they're making a reality show where him and John are traveling the country and revisiting all these chefs that consulted or cooked or were on that movie. And also producers and directors and actress from Marvel. They made Pepper Potts with um, Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> it was really cute. They made these this pot of peppers with her. Um, they went and had dinner with um, Robert Downey Jr. and Tom, what's his last name? Spider-Man, and I know his last name, but I'm having a brain card. Thank you, Tom Holland, my son. Um, Tom Holland and Robert Downey Jr., and they had dinner with them. Um, they had dinner with Robert Rodriguez. He does a lot of horror movies and stuff with Quentin Tarantino. I love Robert Rodriguez. He made them homemade pizzas in his actual kitchen in his house. I'm totally diverging, but uh, I'm way off topic because you got me on something I love. But anyway, I watched the chef show is what it's called. It's on Netflix. You can stream it on Netflix for free if you have the service. Um, and if you like cooking shows or chef shows or Marvel or movies or anything like that, I really think you'd like the show. Um, and it got me all marvelly and foodie. Now I want to cook and, and be a nerd. But I really got off topic there. Sorry, guys. It's a great show, though. And then I went looking for the movie, and um, it's nowhere for free. And I don't like paying $4 to Amazon to rent a movie when I'm already paying for Prime. So we're going to see if Redbox has it. Um, a quote from, I see, I should have known that. But I should have known that because I used to do recreational therapy in a nursing home, and I played, like, all the older, well, what's all these now is what I grew up on, but when I was in my 20s working in a nursing home, we played the Beatles and Elvis and stuff like that for them. Sydney's at Starbucks with her new hair, by the way. I saw your photos. You look great. I love it. You can stay at the cabin from the Avengers movie. It's outside of Atlanta. Oh, man, we should. And then there's also a place in Texas I want to go to. It's the gas station from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh my gosh, Sydney. Okay, first of all, I got to get back on topic. But Sydney, you and I need to talk later because I could not stop making fun of her for that because I've she's cute, but I've always thought she's like kind of like an airhead and out of touch with the real world and kind of lives in her own little 
bubble that she's created for herself and her goop land and I kind of think she's an airhead so I was really really making fun of her I was talking about it to my son and Keith and um yeah and then you have Tom Holland who's like I do all my own stunts here's one more thing I got from the lovey lady this was two dollars but I really thought it was worth it because it's still on the hanger it's still tied with ribbons and bows, ribbons and bows. It is a super extra large. It is so soft. Like this is so soft. $2, brand new with tags, still on the hanger, a fleece blanket with a lovey. And it's like an actual full-sized blanket. It's not just a teeny weeny little blankie. This is a full-sized one. Um, she's definitely very weird. She lives in her own world. Um, I've read, I mean, off topic real quick, I've read articles where she advises other moms, oh, just do this and do that. But in the real world, when you don't have her kind of money, um, you can't just hire a nanny so you can go get a $50 Botox or whatever she does. She's a talented actress. I just think in real life she's kind of... What do you mean I was in that movie? I filmed it and I forgot. <laughs> oh, you know what? I had separated everything I got for myself, but I just found something. Um, I did find one of the original. It's in the other room. I separated it. I found one of the original Dark Tower copies by Stephen King. Um, those of you that are fans of him, it's the larger soft back that they put out with the color illustrations inside of it. Um, I had one of those in like the 80s or 90s. I've, I lost my copy over the years. I found one for a dollar. That was my find of the day and it wasn't even to flip. I found one of the larger softbacks with the full color photos of, of um, Gunslinger by Stephen King. And then I found the original Little Shop of Horrors. This is not the remake that everyone knows with Steve Martin um, and Rick Moranis. This is the original with Jack Nicholson. This is like pre The Shining. You guys, if you have not seen the original, find it, treat yourselves. I paid a buck. So this is gonna be something we're gonna do this weekend. Hey Elizabeth, welcome in. Um, thanks for joining us. Mary's here, happy Friday, Mary. Um, hi Tammy, thanks for coming. I always love to see when you come in. Happy Friday indeed. Guess what we just found out we have in our area that I didn't think we had. I thought, I knew there was one in Florida and we were going to make it a goal to go there in October. Um, but we discovered we have one close by. Did not know it. Did y'all know that Marky Mark and his brothers own a hamburger joint? It's called Wahlburger because they're the Wahlbergs. So cute. So there is a Wahlburger in our area and we are going there for dinner tonight. I am stoked because number one, I love Marky Mark. I love Donnie Wahlberg. I grew up on the new kids. I love them all. And number two, my favorite thing to eat, and Keith's favorite thing to eat in the whole entire world is a really good hamburger. And it is our quest and our goal in life to eat at every single hamburger place in every state we ever visit, um, or city, I should say, keep it to cities. But everywhere we go, we try to eat at all the hamburger places there. And for some reason, we didn't know we had a Wahlburger. That's where we're going. Today, I am being a nerd. I am talking a lot about Marvel and Stephen King and horror movies and Marky Mark. Let's get back to the yard sale fight. Speaking of being a nerd, we have Donatella. Donatello. The purple one's Donatello, yeah? I said Donatella because I'm so used to talking to my girlfriend Donatella. But he's Donatello. He's a turtle. He's super big. And she gave him to me for 50 cents. And then, this is a different yard sale now. The loveys and the baby stuff with the tags was all one lady, the pregnant cute lady. And then, um, we didn't find anything else at that community sale this year. So these are all from other places. Including the movie I showed you. So this is a TMNT. The last giant one like this I had, I believe I had him up for 20 plus shipping. He doesn't feel like he weighs as much, and he doesn't have anything that's going to make a need for a box. 
So if he's under a pound, I'll put him up for free so I can put him in the big poly. But I'll raise his price to like 28. Tammy says, oh, I hope you have a blast. I'm jealous. Um, Sydney says they have Wahlburgers in Myrtle Beach. Uh, Swamp Picker, no, I have never eaten at the Burger Smith in Louisiana. I've only ever been to Louisiana one time. I had a layover in New Orleans, and um, I made it a point to go to the Cafe Le Mans for beignets. Um, and then I went to see Anne Rice's house and where they filmed Interview with the Vampire. So I didn't really get too too far into seeing anything there. It was like the real quick bucket list. Um, we can go to the In and Out in Vegas when we're there, Sydney, because we didn't we didn't try it yet. We tried the one in Tucson. We thought it was disgusting, um, but we'd be willing to try that. But we did like the one we went to last year, Biggie's Burgers, Big Bob's Burgers. That's a show. Um, I can't. The one me and Keith went to last year was so good. It was on the Strip. Elizabeth loves Wahlburgers in Syracuse. I'm excited. I already looked at the menu. I'm torn between the barbecue bacon and the southwestern one with the salsa and the jalapenos on it. Probably going to go with that one. It has pepper jack cheese, too. Yes, I am a big enough nerd that when I get really excited about a new restaurant, I look at the menu ahead of time. Because I don't want to be sitting at the table hemming and hawing and taking forever. It's really hard for me to make decisions when it comes to food and there's too many choices for me. Um, so I look ahead of time. That way I'm not holding the rest of the table up. <laughs> Mary says her son is 32 and still know, and I still know all the Ninja Turtle names and headbands. Um, yeah, I'm 42. I grew up on the turtles myself. And then my kids liked them. They like made a resurgence when they were little. Um, Sydney says the in and out in Vegas was good. We should go to that one and the other one. Let's just be pigs while we're there. The whole point of going on vacation okay i got this little guy now i do tell you guys the beanie boos are still worth picking up beanie babies are poop some beanie babies are good but generally speaking beanie babies are poop that's not to say if someone showed up at your door and wanted to give you 100 beanie babies in a bag for free that you shouldn't take them i would take them because you could still lot them up like all dogs all cats all birds and still get 20 bucks plus shipping for you know a batch of them um themed we have sold big bundles and lots of beanie babies and other super cheap generic plush like that um we've i think it's like you know like teachers <laughs> and um, Sunday school teachers and preachers and um, even nursing homes, they'll buy them in lots like that because they give them out as prizes for games that they play or they have like um, carnivals at the school or the church or the nursing home and they give these out for prizes. So if anybody ever offers you a crap ton of Beanie Babies or generic -y plush for like pennies or free, take them because they still will sell you just got to lot them up by themes and you got to have good keywords in your title and check your weight so you don't screw yourself so put them all in a box and weigh them so you know what you're charging but people will buy them um a lot of teachers and preachers and sunday school teachers and even when i was a recreational um therapist in a nursing home we did it out of our own pocket like out of our own hearts so they they're looking for these. Look at Keith sneaking around behind me. <laughs> Keith sneaking. But they will buy them because they want to pay as little as possible because they're paying out of their own pockets. So don't turn them down if you find them for cheap or free. Just don't go seeking them out. Now, the Beanie Boos are hit or miss. These are a lot like the Webkins, the Gans Webkins I show you. Some of those, even without codes, are worth more money than some with codes. So, um... These are hit or miss, so when I find them cheap enough, 50 cents a quarter, the Beanie Boos, I do pick up. I have found some, like the Panda, um, Mandy the Panda. She's got pink around her eyes instead of the typical black a panda has, and there's Ming. He's got blue. I sold one Mandy by herself for $25, one of the medium-sized ones, and then I sold a Mandy and Ming small-sized for 25 or 30 but they're hit or miss i've brought some beanie boos home that i sold for 10 so i would say not not to spend more than 50 cents unless you know it's one that's worth stuff stuff 
worth money. And the ones with the glitter eyes are always worth more money. And the pandas and the monkeys and the dragons. For some reason, the monkeys and the dragons are almost always, when I get them home and comp them, worth money. This is Pups. Pups the dog. And that's how I title them. I say their name and then what they are and then their inches. But this one is also a resting spot for your cell phone. And she gave them to me for 50 cents. Um, she said a dollar. I put them back down and walked away. And then she's like, well, what do you want? I said 50 cents. So I got them for 50 cents. I don't really haggle when I, I think I've told the story before. I don't really haggle unless it's something I ha If it's something I have to have and I know we need it and I know it's going to make us money, I will, I will, um, be aggressive isn't the right word, assertive. And say, would you take instead this or can I haggle with you? If it's something like this. I try the other method that's not as assertive where I try to haggle. I kind of look at it like I'm disappointed in the price and I set it down and walk away. Nine times out of ten they'll stop me and be like, wait, 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 what would you pay for it? And then I say my price and I usually get it. So anyway, he's a phone holder and I got him for 50 cents. Look at his little blue tail. Uh, Elizabeth, we are fortunate enough that we do um, rent half of an old Victorian house um, and half of an old Victorian house is about as big as a normal house these things are huge um, we have three four floors if you count our basement so our entire ha half of our entire third floor is unfinished attic which we call the serial killer room and it's you know half of our half of the house is this room on the third floor and then the other half is a finished room um we had it set up as a bedroom for the boys at one point but they didn't like to be near the serial killer room and they wanted to come back down on the main floor with us um plus it gets pretty hot up there and the landlord set up an air conditioning unit that doesn't really work that well so we just we all live on the second floor and the first floor and the third floor are storage for our store. The first floor is mostly death pile. I know that sounds crazy, but we did inherit somebody's store. Most of you know that my friend retired and we inherited her entire store. Um, so that's the first floor. All stuff we're still going through, whether we're redoning it or bringing it up here into the eBay room to list it. And then the whole third floor is storage. And there is still a bunk bed in the room that was my kids. Um, it was really hard to put together. So we said, no, we're not taking it apart and moving it back down. We just got the new sleeping arrangements down here and left the bunk bed up there. We figured we'll either leave it or take it apart when we move. I don't know. But we put all the giant plush on that. So we're just, we just have a lot of room. We just have tons of room. We have a really, really big house. There's lots and lots of closets and storage units and places in this nooks and crannies if any of you guys know like about victorian houses they have weird hallways and weird rooms just and they're huge hey rusty raccoon welcome in and he is correct the, the raccoon or the raccoon the unicorn is worth some money so look at how cute this thing is it is a blue Tweety Bird with hearts on its face. I got it for 50 cents. Now, at the same place, I got the movie I bought for myself for a dollar and this for 50 cents. It's Looney Tunes with the hang tag. She had a really nice leap pad for kids, but she was asking 150 or 200 for it. Hard pass, and when I sat it back down, she didn't stop me, and she told the next person, I want like 200, so have fun with that lady. You should probably put that on eBay. Um, we got these for 50 cents a piece. I told you guys to always get these if you find them for like a quarter. I'll pay 50 cents because I know how fast they flip. Um, like it depends on the deck and the condition they're in. They can go anywhere from $8 to 15 or 16 for like the vintage ones and on up. Even if this turns out to be like an $8 one, um, let's see, fees, $1.20. Uh, shipping would probably make it right around five dollars. We pay fifty cents, so you'd profit like two fifty. But they sell overnight. Like I can tell you, it takes me 
I don't even want to say two seconds. It does not even take two seconds to get a photograph of these. I sell similar off of an old temp or I sell similar if I have any in the store and then I have a template for these actually from when we first started picking them up. So it takes me two seconds for a photograph, a minute to list, and they always sell within a day or two. So it's a really quick way to turn 50 cents into three or four bucks on average, more if they're vintage or depending on the deck. Um, but I really wouldn't pay more than 50 cents for them unless I knew they were one of the decks that went for a lot more money. But I'm not, I mean, I we like to get things that have a higher return on investment or a higher profit. But if it's something that you know you can list in like under a minute including photos using a template and it's going to turn your 50 cents into three bucks in like two days why not this lady had a gopro <laughs> all we came up with was her cards she had one of the original models of gopro that already is down to like 60 75 on ebay she had the original one still in the package unopened but we kind of sat in the car and comp to see if we we're going to go back and buy it from her um and she had some accessories out there with it or whatever. But she wanted like the 100, 150 for it. She said 150 and then she said 100. And we were like, no, we'll pass. I'll just take your cards. Um, and then we sat in the car and we comped them just to be sure we hadn't made a huge mistake. And um, no, we didn't because she wanted more than what we could flip it for. Swift Seller says, I got her hooked on plush. Plush can be addicting. It is one of the funnest things to flip. Um, holy bananas, Batman. $3.99. Elizabeth, we still have one Goodwill that does have nine or 50 cents on some of the plush that they put in a buggy or a cart, whatever part of the country you're in, and whatever you call it. Um, but then we have some Goodwills around here that for the Disney, they want $8.99 and $9.99. It is absolutely bananas. I had to pass up some yard sales today because you're getting to go out of town tomorrow. It is hard. You get FOMO. FOMO is the worst. If you guys don't know what FOMO is, it's that fear of missing out. All our plush are a dollar no matter the size. Comp in the car. Now, I think a lot of us do that because you don't want to get all the way home and look up out of curiosity and kick yourself in the butt. Like, we just kind of go to the car and act like we're looking. I mean, they don't know what we're doing on our phone, so. Um, I have, I think Sydney's talking about this already. Hey, KLC. So we're going to talk about my rotary phone. This is not mine. This is for Keith to list. This is the one thing we found for Keith. And then we're going to get into these boxes. I'm going to stop at 5.30, even if we don't get all the way through them. So once I get into the boxes, I'm going to start talking really, really fast like an auctioneer. We're going to start pulling stuff out and getting crazy. Um, the last yard sale of the day we went to was in a community yard sale. And she had a greyhound dog in her yard. And she had all these signs all over and brochures. She was raising money for a charity that helps greyhounds that helps the ones that, um, you know, they use them for running dogs. We have a lot of casinos and tracks in this area of Pittsburgh. And I guess um, when they've used up their, this makes me sad, they use up their usefulness, they're no longer worth it. They end up in shelters or they end up with injuries. So this charity helps the greyhounds. And the quickest way to get to me is animals and tell me anything you buy at my yard sale is going to help animals, especially if you have one of these said animals in the yard with the eyes looking at me. That's my heartstrings. But this woman was like priced to be a charity. All the prices on her stuff was super good, super amazing. Um, she was next door to the guy where I got the Stephen King book. Um... So, there wasn't really anything there that we thought we could really flip, though. So, we were going to up to pay for the phone, and we saw these two boxes. This one is miscellaneous Christmas and Christmas ornaments. $5 for the whole box. It's completely full. I did kind of do a cursory glance standing there. Like, I moved a few things aside, and I saw a sea of Hallmark. 
five dollars even if there's some crappy generic homemade whatever's in there if there is a five or six hallmarks i'm sold because one hallmark christmas ornament can pay for the whole box so i paid five dollars for this whole box of christmas ornaments miscellaneous and she had another box that was two dollars for the whole box of Christmas coffee mugs that we can now list on Poshmark as well. Okay, so I was really excited. So, um, got the phone. Told her I wanted the boxes as well. The woman was so nice. She carried one of the boxes to the car. Keith carried the other one. And I carried the phone. Um, I told her it was okay. He could come back and make another trip. Because she said, do you guys need help? And I said, he'll just make two trips. I'm not allowed to lift that heavy. She's like, oh, I'll help you take a brochure about these dogs and I'm like stop it with the dogs but anyway that's my story about the boxes hey Dan welcome in better late than never um yeah I I don't know that I feel I don't know that I feel like it's rude to cop in front of them but I feel self-aware that they know what I'm doing and I don't want to get into any kind of confrontation because I have heard that some people get really upset if they know you're going to flip their stuff for more money so I just I like to avoid confrontation anytime I can uh, Russ Raccoon says he gets $40 all day for these rotary phones so $5 I mean I would have liked it have been a couple bucks but I think $5 is still good for what these will go for and it was for the dogs. Anyway, I don't know if you guys saw the front of it. It needs cleaned too, so we're going to have to wipe, give it a good wipe down and clean it real good. You can see that. This is a legit rotary, like old one. It's not one of those touch. Have you guys seen the ones that look like a rotary, but it's push? Does anybody remember that sound? My memory is so good with certain things. I could sit here and dial the number I had growing up on this because my grandmother had a blue rotary phone. Not like this, she had one of those square ones and I would always call my house from there, 790. <laughs> yes, this is a real rotary phone, but it's even more older that's not the way to say it properly in english it's older than my grandmother's was because it does have the push down there and you can tell by the way the talk piece says that it's pretty old i think once this beautiful gorgeous phone is cleaned up it's going to do really well for us this may be something that we just do through facebook marketplace or craigslist and don't even try to ship um This is going to be one of those things that's going to be really hard for me to not keep. For longtime viewers and friends that knew me for a long time, probably saw the super vintage, and no, I don't know if it's antique. It's at least vintage. It's a super old typewriter we found at the Benz. 100% full working order. Nothing is wrong with it. It works. It's that bright freaking 60s blue color. Um, I kept it. It's in my room with my book. It's like on a shelf with books around it. Um, it's hard to not want to keep these things. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what we had planned on using on it, Swift Cellar. Absolutely. And some paper towels. And some elbow grease. Um, let's find out. It was no name. I'm sorry, not a name. No year on it, but it has some guy's name, Dong Jun. Is he the one that inspected it or made it? You think? That guy? Dong Jun? Anyway, I really like this phone. And I told Keith, for five bucks, you know what? I'll pay the store back out of my own pocket if it turns out to be poop, because I'll keep it next to my typewriter. 
All right, let's get to these boxes. I'm gonna lay this gently down on the floor. Um, let's start with this one. I don't know, yeah, because this one I'm gonna probably be able to put the ornaments back in there. All right, so this was $5 for this whole box. Um, the long cord. Yeah, I would pace all over my grandmother's house and that coily cord would get all twisted. She would get so mad. Stop pacing. Stop stretching out my cord. You're messing it up. All right. I don't even know if I can see the chat anymore because I'm short. So $5 for this whole box. Like I said, I took a cursory glance just to make sure there was good stuff in there. I did see a lot of Hallmark, but that is the... I don't like how this changed the color, so we'll just dig from here. Um, I don't know what else is in there, so let's find out together. It is a block bag. A homemade owl. I will probably be sending this to Amelia and Rhonda if they want it. A homemade Santa whose googly eye just rolled out of the bag onto my floor. There's now an eyeball on my floor. Things you thought you'd never. This is a, oh boy. It's not good so far, right guys? At least we help the dogs. This is a homemade, now this one is probably sellable. I think it's metal. I don't know, there's probably uh, some dolphin lover out there, Dennis, that would love that lamp. You never know. Like, if you found a hippo lamp, I know somebody who would really like that. <laughs> now, this is cute. This looks like, it doesn't say Hallmark on it, but it, it looks like an actual real ornament. Christmas 1991, so this is is it vintage? Yes, it is. I can't math. And it's a little teeter-totter with little rabbits on it. And the little present goes back and forth. Isn't that cute? And look at the little rabbit face. Oh, he's cute. So that's a good one. It, I don't even, I, it may not be branded, but I would just sell it as a vintage Christmas one. Isn't it? It's super cute. Somebody likes rabbits. Every animal has somebody I need to love it. Um, I don't know. Didn't get that. This is not an ornament. But this is super cool because I have sold these before, so I'm kind of excited. Um, this is probably from Target or Walmart. But that's okay. These little cheese knives with the candy canes on them. I've sold generic ones of these before. Um, for like ten twelve dollars a pop. I had candy canes. I had Santa's I had some with golf balls um, And some with baseballs. They were all given to us by Keith's grandmother in the beginning when we were first getting started She gave us a bunch of stuff from her house to sell to ha not have cost of goods starting up and They they sell pretty well and this one has a dish with it. So and it's original box So even if it's Target or Walmart brand, it's still something that we can sell um, and probably put a $15, $16 price tag on that. So that's cool. This is cool. See, uh, this is Target. I recognize the tag from when I worked there. But this is a Santa wind chime. Here's some Hallmark. This is the Lionel Daylight Observation Car, and it glows. So when I go to do picture time, I will take it out and test it. Um, what I do with stuff that glows or lights up, if you guys want an example, my store is public. You can get to the Hippo Hut. I should say our store is public. Um, we have a Steelers hat in there right now that has Christmas lights in it, and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. I take all of our photos normal with our lights behind us, and then I turn them off dark and light it up and take a photo of it. You can see that example in our Steelers hat that we have in there. It lights up with lights. And I have um, a cat. I think it's from Doc McStuffins. Or it's, no, it's a Disney princess cat. 
and she lights up. So if it works, make it dark and take a picture of it lit up. Lionel Daylight Oil Tinder, Hallmark. Elizabeth's making dinner and listing. Yeah, as soon as we're done here, we are leaving to go to the Wahlburger. Uh, Hallmark Slay 2000, here comes Santa, collector series. He's in like a rocket. Of course, I will have to open all of these up and double check them that they're, you know, I'm clearly just showing you guys the boxes. So when I get in there, we may discover that some are broken or don't have all their pieces. Some of these boxes have cosmetic damage. Um, but I will thoroughly inspect them and stuff when it comes time to do the photos. Just want to get through the box with you guys just to see what we got. Joy is in the air, 1990, keepsake tournament. So that's vintage. We got a, oh, oh, this is nice. Gore ham, Christmas tree, salt and pepper. Clear Christmas tree, salt and pepper shakers by Gore ham. Oh, this is nice. Very, very nice. Mary Marinette action tree ornament this is again target but it will still sell somebody wants a nutcracker marionette marionette how do we say that word for the tree classic christmas ornaments from kmart <laughs> die cast metal and plastic collectibles um the original price tag does say five dollars kmart is now out of business as we all know and if I could find a year on this, if it were, it's vintage, 1999. Kmart is out of business and this is a vintage, so it's still probably going to be worth money. Yeah, Sydney, maybe. This may be what I started with. What do you think? Um, aw, special teacher mouse. If you guys didn't ever know... Rodents are like my all-time favorite. Any kind of rodent. Um, as far as pets, you guys, I love hippos. Love hippos. But as far as having pets, hamsters, rats, mice, gerbils, chinchillas, rabbits. I like rodents. Look how cute he is. That's awesome, Tammy. I found a bag at the bins like that once where I got them home and a bunch of them were broken and crap and we had to throw them away, but the ones that were salvageable, we more than like five times our money. That's why I was worried. Once I saw that there was at least going to be some money in the, because one of these is going to sell and make the five bucks and the rest is pure profit. And even if I start listing them now and they take it till next Christmas to sell, it's pure profit. It's volume in the store. It's numbers in the store and um pure profit so that was a kmart one too the mouse on the apple we got a snowman he looks like a generic dollar tree but can this go buy them this thing I, I whatever this thing is i yeah i may lot up all of these homemade ones these handcrafted ones and put them on etsy we got one that's uh crocheted candle very good idea thank you Sid because I may have just redoted the handcrafted ones without even thinking but I could absolutely lock them up as like a handcrafted ornament lot on Etsy here's a wreath that's handmade I think what the lady probably did without even really realizing what was good and what wasn't because it was for charity she was probably like, I'm just going to stick a bunch of stuff in a box and put a price tag on it and see if anyone bites. Here's a snowman. And I guess I will lock that with this because they look like they match. I have another train, 449 Daylight Steam Locomotive Collector Series. So we found these one trains a couple years ago. They were the cover photo for a long time on our Facebook for Business page. They ended up being money. So I always grab trains now. Um, I don't know what those are. I mean, it's Rudolph and Santa. But they're like little... They're like those... Um, remember those magic beans? 
that you put down and they wobbled around. We had gotten a Cheshire Cat one once in the big Alice in Wonder Wonderland lot we bought. It sold for like 12 bucks. Handmade. Oh, these are delicate. I think these are made out of real eggshells. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> They're pretty though. Yeah, I think I might make a Etsy store after all with my little handcraft stuff I ended up with here. Holiday lights, tree reflector, gold stars. So it's just a, ba a bag, a box of gold stars. We've got a thing. We have an ornament with no markings on it. I'm, I think most people would say that that's a cat. It looks like a ferret to me. More stars. It's like she knew I was coming huh? off. <laughs> I don't. Another handmade leaf ornament wreath. These are I don't know. I think they're just genera people. Genera people. They're not, I don't, I was going to say Scourge, but I don't think he is. Um, these look handmade as well. So I got a bag of handmade shiny Christmas trees. There's two green, a white, and a red. Uh, dish. Another dish. This one has holly on it. Okay, this goes, I found the back to the package, I don't know where I put it, right here. So this back goes to this, it's a swing, swing set or a swing on the porch I guess. Snowman in a bag, oh my gosh I want to keep this one. My God, how cute is this? Oh my gosh. He's got a stocking full of money, but the parts on the board are 3D, guys. You see the dog and the, th oh my God, and the money and the dice, and even the little bits of paper and property cards are 3D, like paper stuck on the board. Look at that. Oh my gosh, that is so stinking cute. I love Monopoly. It's officially licensed by Monopoly. Oh my god, that's going to be a really hard, super hard one to part with. We're getting to the point where I'm too short to get anything else out. There's a couple of like generic toy puppet things. Charlie Brown in the box. You pop them out. There's a couple of those. There are, these are neat. There's three of these in there. <laughs> Shiny snowflakes. A rando fuzzy angel. Santa's workshop workbench collection. I can read today. This is a boy haul on a Christmas tree. That Monopoly one is sitting on my laptop. I can't even get over that. How cute that is. Village collectibles. Uh, at a time when we should feel most blessed, the holidays can make us feel quite stressed. When you feel the crabbies coming on, sprinkle yourself with Christmas cheer. Sprinkle on others as needed. That is cute. I 
it's a little salt and pepper shaker with like glitter and like a present just like little crafty things inside of it that is cute and we're gonna go a little over an hour guys because i still got the mugs to look at but those will be quicker um did i show you that before i put it back in it's a house we have a mouse oh my god it's the mouse there's another mouse that looks like he should be on the thing with him but it says, Dear Santa, this little mouse is writing a letter to Santa. Isn't he stinking cute? Little mouse. Love mice. A uh, little stocking. Looks like it's handcrafted out of a burlap sack. My Christmas cheer. That was sprinkle on people. This is a cute bear with balloons. He is it's currently attached to this candle, so I'll have to work the two of them apart later. And this thing, this bear, and we have another game board that I'm going to totally forget about. You watch. This is, oh my god, this is life. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's a 3D board of life. This time Santa's on the board playing the game. And you can see that um, everything is 3D. And there's the little spitter. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. And this is the game of life on the back. Why couldn't I have found a box full of board game ornament? Well, no, I know why. Because then I would have spent five bucks on things I would have kept. I love board games, guys. Board and card games are my fave. Um, and those are just so stinking cute. I'm trying to. There we go. We'll just push this box back over here and get these back in. And then I'll go through the mugs with you real quick. And then I will let you guys go so you can get started on your weekend plans, whatever they are. We will be going yard selling tomorrow. What? I guess they're not talking to me. We will be going yard selling tomorrow. And on Sunday we are going to go see the Dark Phoenix and then go to a couple Goodwills for 99 cent day. Alright, let's see if we can get to these mugs real quick. These. These will probably, I will probably let them go, but they are just so cute. So they'll be something that maybe I'll list and they'll hang out on my desk with me until they sell. So I can look at them. Alright, so this uh, box of mugs was $2 for the whole box. It says $3 if you can see that right here. It says $3 for all. Um, but then she put this $2 sticker on it up here. And when I was looking at it, I was going to pair it through. I didn't care. She's like, oh, no, it's two now because it's the end of the day. Well, here's my $2. Worth $2 with the first one I pull out. Look at that. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer official. to sell stuff like this like how 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 can you get oh my heart my emotions oh his nose do you guys see it glowing or is it too bright in here it glows and plays well that was worth the two bucks right there boom uh this is a cute just generic magic of christmas snowman We've got a bucket. This looks like a Target thing. It sure is. That's okay. It's cute. We've got Royal Norfolk. I've done good with that brand before. This is a Santa mug. 
this just looks like a generic brand, but it's still cute. See, even generic coffee mugs with the cute, you know, with the right keywords, Christmas, holiday, magic, Santa, another Royal Norfolk. Slightly creepy. That mug is cute. It sings and lights up. Um, this one's another generic one, but again, if they're cute enough, and your pictures are really great, especially the front photo, the first one everybody sees, you get good photograph, you put super good keywords in your title, um, people will buy them. This one has the inner snowman in there. Wee! Wee! It's like Christmas in here, guys. I can't believe the first one I pulled out was my jackpot, though. Um, have a fake candle call his name Jesus and it works so this will be another thing I'll have to photograph in the dark the coffee mug too just to show them the light not all the pictures I get really good normal pictures and then just the lights um, I mean I'm thinking that that's generic generic that's the third one I've seen like that this one has more Santa see but I might try to find sets too when I go to list these mugs, if I can find two that match or four that are similar, you can sell them as sets. I think this is meant for a light of some kind, a candle. OMG! <laughs> these are going on Poshmark too. Because you can add candle holders on there now. Look at this candle holder. Oh my gosh, he's even got glasses on. He's so cute. I don't even like Christmas. Just so you guys know, I'm not a big Christmas fan. Um, I'm not really big. I don't really like Christmas. I like Halloween. That's my favorite. But Chris, this stuff is cute. And that, you know, is kind of like what I wanted to tell you. Even if you don't like something... Other people do, and other people will. And yeah, I'm just throwing paper all over my floor. It's okay. Clean it up. Um, so when I saw these boxes for five and two dollars respectively, and I could see Hallmark, I could see that these were going to be things that I could cross post on Poshmark. I could see good stuff. Um, it doesn't matter what I like, and I think that goes with it goes with religion and politics in. Um, Anything you can conceivably think of that people will like and dislike. Put your emotions aside. This is a business. I don't I don't care what religion I am or what politics I believe in, what holidays I like, what styles of fashion I like, what colors I even like. I get stuff that I know other people will like and will pay money for, regardless of how I feel. I will list a Trump tie next to a Hillary Clinton book, next to a Halloween bat, next to a Santa next to a Bible, next to a, a tarot deck. I don't care. I like making money. So just a little bit of a, of a teachable moment there. This one's Russ, guys. Cute, 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 royal rocking horse. I actually had a rocking horse, a wooden one like that, that I got at the yard sale once that went for a good amount. This is from Kohl's. But it's still so cute. It is a... Oh, it has never been used. It is a cinnamon sugar cookie candle. It still has the plastic on the top and the wick is down. And I believe it is meant to be an M&M. It just says Kohl's on the bottom. I don't want to get in Vero trouble if I say M&M candle, but that's what it looks like to me. Um... Maybe on Poshmark, but not on eBay. It's like Christmas in here. This one looks handmade. And I don't think it's glass. So, maybe that one will go on Etsy. I gotta get an Etsy store. I've actually been meaning to, because I did start designing some um, flippin' hippo shirts for people. 
And the one place I found that you can do them by order, so like I don't have to prepay for 100 shirts and let them, there's a fly in here, sorry. Let them sit in my house and send them out to you guys. There's a place that I can design them and then they print them as they're ordered, one at a time or whatever. But they want you to set up on Etsy. I just haven't gotten around to finishing the designs or setting up yet. Well, this is staying with me, probably. Because one, I bet it smells good. Okay, it's cookie. Anything cookie flavored or vanilla flavored, you know is a good candle. I will sell that because you know that's worth money, right? Yankee Candle, Farmer's Market, Christmas Cookie. It smells super good. It may have been used a little bit, I think. Well, yeah, clearly it has, but look at the design. It's not just a white vanilla colored wax. There's sugar cookies in there, Christmas and stars, and they're all glittery, and it's just the cutest thing I've ever seen. Oh my gosh. And I think there's just one more, guys. So somebody out there who's named Charlie needs a Charlie mug, and they'll find it in our store. Anyway, guys, thank you so, so much for coming in today. And um, vanilla scented stuff gives, I love it. It's my, well, peach and pumpkin too, but I do love vanilla. So thank you guys so, so much for coming in and hanging out with me today. I did keep you a little bit longer than an hour. So I do appreciate you guys staying and looking through these boxes with me. That was super exciting. Um, honestly, I bought them, put them in the trunk. They were brought in late last night by Keith and set up for me to show you guys today. I did not look through them. I had no idea what we were getting into here. So that was pretty exciting. Um, opening them up and seeing what I got for our money and what's going to be listed where and what's going to be worth money. Um, Dennis is my dad's name. So do me a favor, guys, before you leave, smash that like button. It really does help the channel a lot. And if you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe to our channel and help us feed a hungry hippo. Join our Facebook group. Link is in the description box for you guys. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're at Flippin' Hippos across all social media. Again, thank you so, so much for joining me today. You guys are the absolute best. Go be productive. Go make some money. Have a really wonderful weekend. And may everybody have uh, really super good luck with sales and sourcing this weekend. Mwah. Love you guys. Bye.